Hi, my name is Charlie Kells. I'm an attorney for the Department of Homeland Security's Office of Health Affairs and a judge advocate in the Air Force Reserve. And I'm Dr. Lori Kells, chief resident in the Department of Psychiatry at the George Washington University School of Medicine and Health Sciences. The title of our article is Medical Privacy After Death, Implications of New Modifications to the HIPAA Privacy Rule. It will appear in an upcoming issue of Mayo Clinic Proceedings. In a famous historical scene, when President Lincoln died in April 1865, his Secretary of War reportedly remarked, now he belongs to the ages. If the dead belong to posterity, then who owns their personal information? Specifically, what happens to their medical records and to the confidential relationship that existed between the patient and his physician? Our commentary examines the privacy afforded to the health information of deceased individuals, and the role of physicians and hospitals in safeguarding and disclosing these records. It analyzes recent changes to the law in light of the doctor's duty of confidentiality to her patients. Earlier this year, the Department of Health and Human Services published the most sweeping changes to its health information regulations since they were first implemented in the late 1990s and early 2000s. The privacy rule is one such regulation issued under the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act, or HIPAA, that governs how healthcare entities can use and disclose individuals' medical information. One of the major modifications made this year concerns the medical records of the deceased. This change has practical implications for clinicians, but it is also an area where medical ethics and privacy law interact and sometimes conflict. From the perspective of professional ethics, the AMA code states that confidentiality retains substantially the same significance regardless of whether the patient is living or deceased. Essentially, the information should be kept confidential to the greatest possible degree. But from the perspective of privacy law, an individual's protectable interests typically cease at death. So, for example, the Federal Privacy Act excludes decedents from its statutory protections. Courts have, however, recognized a privacy interest in the surviving family members of the deceased, which is essentially a right to mourn in relative tranquility and to not be subjected to further distress. This is why the military has been allowed to preclude media coverage of the stateside arrival of wartime casualties, out of respect for the privacy of the survivors of the fallen. The Supreme Court has also held that the family members of a suicide victim in this case, former White House Deputy Counsel Vincent Foster, have a right to, to personal privacy with respect to their close relatives' death scene images. The HIPAA privacy rule does not create a new legal privacy right for deceased individuals, but it does create a procedural blueprint that healthcare entities must follow in their use and disclosure of personal information. In doing so, it must strike a balance between family privacy, public access, and the expectations of confidentiality that the individual had while alive. The original proposed privacy rule in 1999 extended its protections to the medical records of decedents for only two years. This approach was criticized as not sufficiently protective of personal privacy. As a result, in the final privacy rule first published a year later, the protection afforded to decedents' records was extended indefinitely. Their matter stood for over a dozen years until the most recent changes. Under the new rule, protection lapses 50 years after the patient's death, which is intended to span roughly two generations. This modification accounts for the impact of disclosure of potentially sensitive information on the decedent's reputation and the family's sensibilities, but calculates that after two generations, these factors no longer merit regulatory protection. This does not mean that hospitals are compelled to release these records. Just last year, when several Minnesota lawmakers sought Lou Gehrig's records in the Mayo Clinic, Mayo declined to release them, citing the baseball legend's privacy. Another major change in the new rule is providing access to decedent's medical records for family members and friends who were previously involved in the patient's care or payment for care. Before this modification, individuals who had been intimately involved in the patient's care could find themselves denied information post-mortem unless they were recognized as an executor of the estate. This proved difficult for hospitals 
because a loved one's involvement in the patient's care can create a justifiable expectation of access to their health information after death. Under the new rules, physicians can now make the same common sense judgments with respect to deceased patients as they do for living patients in terms of sharing information with family members who have a legitimate need to know. Our commentary discusses the HIPAA modifications, analyzes their impact, and provides a table to help physicians and hospitals understand the new rules and walk them through how they work. Thank you for your time, and we hope our commentary proves helpful in your practice. We hope you benefited from this presentation based on the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you're interested in more information about Mayo Clinic Proceedings, visit our website at www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you will find additional videos on our YouTube channel, and you can follow us on Twitter. For more information on healthcare at Mayo Clinic, please visit www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.